Yeah, absolutely. No path for the win. No path plus plus. I love it. Um, dude, yes. That's what I'm talking about. VMU Kiss. We're in there. There's like, how many of us are using Torch 3D for rifting? Like three? <laughs> like it's me, you, and that dude doing that zombie game? Is that it? Is anyone else using Torch 3D? It's so good, you guys. Just use Torch 3D. Um, so awesome. So, let me just show you Torch 3D. What? Boon! Unbelievable! <laughs> You're just gonna diss me like that, bro? <laughs> That's cold. <laughs> Cause I dumped UDK. That's messed up. I thought we were bros. <laughs> <laughs> dude look at this boom project manager all you have to say is a new project template rift you're in there create it does everything for you oh okay so you go into your project you go like you know oh you want to make it for rift oh modules check boxes full it's check boxes you want to use a razor hydra check boxes bro what's that What's that? You got a leap motion controller? Check boxes, man. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna open up that folder. Go to my game. First project. Let's run this chumpy. Let's see what we got going on. And uh <laughs> That's awesome. So bam. So this is what's going on. This is one of the things I like about Torque 3D. Like, you know, you have this template that Dave made, which is beautiful, and you can say full screen, window mode. You keep it in window mode when you want to go to the editor. But you go to play, you can just be in the blank room, matrix style, and it loads up, right? So there we go. We're in the app. Um, everything's here. And the thing is, oh, you press F11. Oh, no, if I press F11, I'm going to stop the stream. Damn it. <laughs> Let me go. So let me go here. GUI editor. No. I want the world editor. No. Close editor. World editor. Excellent. Let's change it up. So normally there's a shortcut key that just switches between these. But you see I still have my rift working. It's just not the double vision action. Um, but I can switch this. It's now uh, free camera. Boom. So Rift is in full effect. And uh what come on, scene tree, what's up? Go on the library, say vehicles. Boom. I double click on this, boom. Car is in there. And if I want, uh I go right into play game. I'm now in free camera mode because that's where it was before. And uh I go wherever I look, which is awesome. So yeah, it's like cool, like you're pressing one button to go back and forth between development environment and game, which is really nice. Um, so, you know, I could go like, huh, okay, that looks good, let me take that off, let me go back into um, the editor. Um, damn it, no. <laughs> World editor. So it would be quicker than this, it's actually just button presses. Um, it's like F10 to the world editor, F11 to get to the, no, F11 for world editor, F10 for GUI editor, and you can go back and forth like lightning fast, which is really nice. Um, and then like, you know, I can take like meshes that I made in Blender or whatever. I have just haven't done a whole lot, but like that, that, uh, door frame from Star Trek, there it is. And, uh, you know, I can move it up and down, boom. Um. And then I could be like, well, how big is this? What is the scale? And I could totally just be like, oh, oh, that's way too big. You know, I need to go, you know, bring that down. And uh, there we go. So normally it's a lot quicker than that, but you kind of get the idea, which is kind of why I like what's going on, uh, which is pretty sweet. Um, excellent. So it's you know it's pretty usable um you know i haven't explored all the assets they have there's a lot of stuff that's been made or people i guess that they're selling assets kind of like unity style i believe um but uh 
yeah, it, it seems pretty cool. Um, and like I said, I mean, you have a template project where it's just a matter of checkboxes, and you have Rift and Hydra and Leap Motion all working, and then you just build your world and go from there. Uh, and then when you want custom stuff, um, you get right into their editor, Torsion, which is like 40 bucks, but I'm probably going to end up buying it. It's like a 25-day trial or something. Um, and then you can, you know, this is kind of their Torque 3D scripting engine that you can, um, like, you know, get into and and do more custom things with um, and uh, make that happen. And uh, there seems to be lots of documentation, lots of support. Um, it is kind of frustrating because there's so many versions, so some of the tutorials, like, don't work with each other. So they're still figuring a lot of that stuff out, but... Uh, it's it's probably going to be my tool of choice. I think I'm going to try to use it just because there's I mean a lot of flexibility. Uh, you know I can beef up my my C plus plus and also get a handle on the scripting and all this good stuff and um and uh, you know hopefully come up with something pretty cool. So we'll see. Uh, it's really a lot depending on how much time I actually have to to kill on this, um, which is not much at the current time. So I'm just taking it really baby steps and really learning a little teeny bit at a time. Um, so we'll see how things end up working out, uh, which is cool. Excellent. Oh, head, Hydra as head tracking. Um, it doesn't seem like it'll be too too tough. Um, let me see, Torque 3D. What's really cool is that um, on the GitHub, David's just written all this stuff. So you go here and uh you know it's a Razor Hydra page on the Torque 3D GitHub and it basically gives you, you know, the skinny. Like you wanna know how to set up, this is how you set it up. This is how you know you get your six cents SDK. Um it gives you, you know, where to put the path like manually, um to how to edit your project uh, conf, uh config file and get that going on what to add in um, and this is like the bare bones like hard way like the the new project manager actually does this automatically with a few checkboxes now um, and then using the Razor Hydra input like um, you know they have the the buttons uh, docked and then input events kind of standard and then rotation events so Breaking these down, you know, you have all of your uh, rotation and position functions laid out here. Um, and then it's just a matter of assigning those to the position of the camera, I believe. Um, I don't know if he actually covers it here. And that, I'm sure it's, yeah, I'm sure it's pretty straightforward. Um, to to get that done it's probably just a bit a bit of scripting but I'll see um, that's one of the things I would like to do like to have it on the chest or on the head and have some positional tracking going on there um, so like I said baby steps for me let's see how things are are going to work and uh, see how that rolls so that should be pretty cool um,